Hello and welcome to Soundcheck by Support Act. This is Luke from Support Act again in my spare bedroom. And today I am joined by Melissa Ma, financial coach from FinCare. Thanks for joining us, Melissa. Well, thanks for having me along, Luke. And before we kick off, I want to share a very uh, exciting fact that I just <laughs> learned about Melissa Ma when discussing her surname, uh, that she is actually the niece of Alf Stewart. <laughs> One of my or many famous names. <laughs> Or Raymar, as he is known to all of his family. Um, so thanks for joining us today, Melissa. We, we thought it'd be really, uh, first of all, I want to mention the Support Act Wellbeing Helpline. That's a 24 hour, seven day a week service that Support Act provides with the support of Access EAP uh, to bring um, mental health and other wellbeing support, uh, phone support, that is, on 1-800-959-500. Uh, and that is if you are experiencing issues with your own mental health or well-being, or if you need financial support as well, they have financial coaches and counsellors available through that service. Um, so we wanted to talk about financial well-being today. So hence why Melissa is joining us. And you are a financial coach. Do you want to explain to us what that is, Melissa? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Luke. Thanks for having me along. Hi, no everyone. Worries. I just, um, I just, I'll just give you a little bit, I'll, you know, give you a couple of, a very quick rundown of my background um, of what brought me to talking to you today. Is that, that okay, Luke? So I've been, in, I've been involved in the finance industry for about 25 years. Um, predominantly as a financial planner, I was a stockbroker for four years. I worked for a superannuation fund for about seven years. So I've had a really broad exposure to everything in finance and also worked for the big corporates and also the small boutique financial planning firms. And what I found um, about five years ago is number one, I decided I didn't want to be employed anymore. Um, mm -hmm. and you want to be your own boss. Exactly. Exactly. Like many people in the music industry. <laughs> well, people <laughs> quite kept trying to shove me in a box and I, I wouldn't go. So, um, that, um, that was one of my motivations, but also I, I continue had these conversations with people who were very, very good at what they did. So, you know, probably a lot of people are listening to this really fantastic at their jobs and very much in their genius zone. But, and the, for some reason, there has always been this um, expectation if you're good at what you do, that you're automatically good with money. And there's absolutely no correlation whatsoever. There could be actually an indirect correlation. Um, and because people are so focused on being in their genius zone and doing you know, what they love, that they, they're not necessarily particularly good at managing their money. And so, but when people, when there's that expectation that people are good with it, that they will, um, there tends to be, can be a lot of embarrassment and shame about not being all over it, which mm -hmm. then leads to people perhaps making decisions around their money and their finances that are not necessarily serving them and can put them under more financial pressure and, and stress. So my whole basis of leaving finance and, um, and my job was to start my own business to create, create a safe space to have a real conversation around money. And so that was my, now, that was the basis of me forming my own business and what's led to, to me talking to you today. So I hope, you know, that's a lot of people can relate to that, that are, um, that are listening in here, Luke. Yeah, most definitely. I think there'll yeah. be a lot of people on the same page as you. Yeah. So um, when we're talking about financial well-being, particularly at the moment, obviously our industry for artists, crew, people working uh, within the industry have been hit uh, hard by yeah. the cancellation crisis that happened with COVID-19. What, um, you know, obviously there's the job seeker and job keeper and there's government measures coming into place. But what are some of the things that people should be thinking about in ensuring their own financial well-being through this time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Luke. And look, I, my, I, my love and compassion goes out to everyone in the industry because obviously it has been hit really. It was one of the first ones that were, you know, that went down and stuff like that. And I'm fantastic that you, used to, that you shared with me that you've actually received some funding from the government. So that's, that's great to support everyone. Look, I think... The most important thing at the moment is to actually really, you know, as much as we want to hide under the covers and pull the doona over our head, I think more so um, than ever, particularly with regards to our money and our finances, is to really be proactive. Um, now, whether that means going and registering your intent to claim with the job seeker, whether that's talking to your employer about whether you're able to get the job keeper, or just actually really conducting your own, I call it personal financial audit, with our own personal finances and our money. I think it's really important to, you know, I've talked, I do, I do, I've done this in my business for years, um, but more so that now than ever, it's really, really important to understand, you know, what your money put, what, what your money pot looks like and really knowing your numbers. Because one of my favourite sayings is, um, you know, 
knowing where your money goes gives you freedom and choice around where you want your money to go. But first of all, you need to understand what that looks like. So it's really about shining a light on your money and personal finances at the moment. And, um, and you know, I mean, I can share with you some different thoughts around that area. Um, with regards to what's happening with the government and everything at the moment, I think that, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's two sides of the coin there, that the, the government is, you know, giving um, income support. So there's, you know, generating and trying to replace, you know, to some extent, you know, incomes of people. But on the other side of the coin, there's lots of measures people can take to reduce their cost of living just for themselves. Um, I think, you know, a, a really good example of this is people that have mortgages um, that have, you know, I mean, and this is, you need to, once again, need to be proactive and talk to your individual bank or your, you know, provider, or if you've got a relationship with a mortgage broker, have a chat to them. But um, banks are allowing people to, you know, the, the ability to put their mortgage repayments on hold for three months with, the, with, with you know, the ability to do, perhaps do it for another three months, which is, which is great. But once again, you need to really understand the ramifications of doing that because you can put your interest rates on hold, but the interest will still accruing, will keep mm -hmm. accruing. So at the end of that period, you're still going to have to pay that interest back at some stage. So, and that's like, you know, so with mortgage repayments, um, you know, your utilities, your insurance, all, you know, all your fixed costs, what I call fixed costs, which are any, you know, of your ongoing um, fixed costs, anything you pay on an ongoing basis, it's usually about the same amount. There's, you know, there's relief available for all of those. So it might be, um, you know, putting in place a payment plan with the lesser amount um, with you, you know, so there's lots of different options available. But the thing I've been talking to my clients about and sharing with my community is that it doesn't have to be an all or nothing approach. Like if you can continue servicing them, absolutely fantastic. But I mean, obviously a lot of people are in a situation where they, they, they the incomes have reduced, even if they're receiving support. So they might not be able to cover everything else up. So what I'm suggesting to people is doing a stepped approach with regards to their fixed costs. So it doesn't have to be a, you know, pay it all or just put it on all completely on hold. There can be a stepped approach. So say, for example, with your mortgage repayments, if you can't service the full repayment, perhaps talk to your provider and you could go back to interest only for now. If you can continue servicing that, fantastic, because at least you're still paying something and it's mm -hmm. not just accruing, accruing, accruing. And then, you know, if you get to the point where you are in a situation where you have to put them on hold, you've got that option as well. So it can sort of be a stepped approach with reducing your fixed costs. So first of all, you have to understand what they are, um, but also that you can, you know, you can do that stepped approach. So you can do it in stages, if you know what I mean. So yeah. and if you, people talking to someone, if they, you know, if they chat to a financial coach on those one-on-one -on -one phone sessions, they'll be able to talk them through that. Um, so just going, going back to that first thing, you know, like, There'll be a lot of people who kind of do pull the dinner up over their head or <clears throat> stick their head in the sand or whatever metaphor you want to go for. <laughs> there's I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, many, there's many metaphors about running away from what you've got to face. But yes. um, what's your advice? I mean, from a financial coach's perspective, I'm sure you probably see that quite a bit. I mean, mm. a, a bit of it is about just going, if you get on top of it and if you, you, can, you can get across what your outgoings are, you've got to face the facts and then at least you can put a plan in them, yeah? Exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, it's um, the best map in the world is no good if you don't know where you are. So yeah, that's, exactly. <laughs> that's a, someone said that to me years ago when they were thinking about when they thought, when they knew about my business and stuff like that. And it's really true with regards to that. So what I, um, Luke, what I suggest to people is to put in, like to do a personal financial audit. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really shining the light on your personal, fi you know, money and your personal finances and getting, crystal clear and you know getting that clarity and awareness and efficiency around what that looks like you know as I said before around what your money pot actually looks like so it's you know things like going and having a look at your bank accounts a lot of people that I work with don't even are fearful of going and looking at their bank accounts because they actually don't want to know what's going on so now I say people the fear the level of fear that you feel around looking at what's going to happen in your bank accounts is 10 million times worse than actually always will always be worse than actually what it, what reality is, but that, cause that's what's keeping us small and, you know, from not growing and taking, you know, accountability and responsibility for our actions. So go and have a look at your bank accounts, rip that bandaid off and go and make friends with your bank account. I think that's a, you know, a really important first step just to understand, you know, what's going on and what's coming in and what's going out the second thing is really getting back to fixed costs is going through and reviewing your fixed costs. So listing So what is out, a fixed cost? Okay. So a fixed cost is really anything you 
pay on a regular ongoing basis and and usually you know it's it's either you know so that's your rent or so it's your you know, rent like child care yep mortgage repayments um your utilities your insurances your phone and internet um yep. anything to do with children you know school fees child the, re the reliable ones not not the latte funds the, exactly the, so the you know i break things, exactly right? i break them to to so fixed costs are your ongoing fixed payments that you know are going to come up, you know, weekly, fortnightly, quarterly, annually. And then you've got your lifestyle or your discretionary spending. So that's pretty much anything else. It's not a fixed cost. And every time you walk out the door, what you spend your money on. Yeah. Okay. So first all of right. all, yeah, it's going through and reviewing your fixed costs. So what I suggest to people is write out all your fixed costs and then put, go and write out, you know, what, what the fixed, what the amount is, what basis you pay those on. And then go through and do a tick or a cross beside them, whether you are actually able to review them or not. Because some of them we aren't able to review. So, I mean, for example, I'm in a, I live in a townhouse. I pay body corporate. I can't review that. That's, that's just a, that's a, a cost that I don't have any control over. Um, it just, it is what it is. Um, another example would be our rates. If we, if we own a property, um, our water, usually there's only one provided with water. So, you know, we don't have any choice then. But then, you know, a lot of the other ones like our electricity, our general internet. insurances, internet, um, private health insurance, whatever, you know, there's a lot of ones that we can review. So go through and put a ticker or a cross beside each one you can review. And then people say to me, but yeah, I, I can't, you know, it takes, it could be hours ringing around all the different providers. I don't understand my policy or my plan. So I don't know if I'm, you know, comparing apples with apples or apples with oranges. When I, I say this to people, just ring up your current provider and tell them you're having a look around and you want to review your cover. And I can tell you, I can't guarantee them you a hundred percent, but they will give you some incentive to stay with them even more so now. I guess, I guess that, that's one of the things that people, and I know myself even, especially if there's some debt involved with, you know, those standing costs that you kind of feel fearful about contacting people yep. or, you know, renegotiating because you're afraid. And it's the same with outstanding taxes or whatever it might be having that negotiation can be scary because you feel like you're already on the back foot in that negotiation. Yeah. Um, you know, what advice do you have for people who are in that situation? Yeah. Cause right I mean, now more than ever, people are having to face facts about doing their taxes to get job seeker and job keeper. That's particularly important right now. Yeah. Look, I think it's, it comes back to being really proactive and taking accountability and responsibility for your own circumstances, your own finances, your own money. And I can tell you without doubt, if you are proactive and, you know, and contacting your providers and talking to them and letting them know what's going on, they are going to be a lot more understanding and um, helpful than if you run away and hide and they don't hear from you. Because if you're not contacting them, they don't know what's going on. So it's... Yeah, and it's, and, and it, there's a lot of power for the consumer these days. There's a lot of protection. Oh, absolutely, in, absolutely. In negotiating, yeah. Yeah, and look, I mean, I, I mean, I had a direct debit come out the other day that I just got <laughs> confused. I'll say confused in inverted commas, and um, and they charged me a, you know, they charged me a, a fee, fee. Yeah, a fee. Well, I got designed a fee of the bank, but the direct debit company. And I rang them up and I said, nah, this is not, no. not, not, not right at the moment. And they went, yeah, fair enough, fair call, and they they refunded me the, you know, it was twenty dollars, but it was it was twenty dollars that I it yeah, was it was just it's a your charge. money exactly, and so. You know, once again, if I hadn't rung, and they were in me, no, it's if the worst, if you can, the worst people thing people can say if you ask is no, but if you exactly. don't ask, there's no opportunity for them to, to say yes. And I think it's it's just it's being proactive instead of reactive because if you you know what I mean if if you are in co you know communication with your providers, um, they and, and letting them know what's happening they will be, and they can make notes on the system and they will be very helpful and very understanding. But if you don't talk into them, if you're not talking to them, they don't, you, they can't even have the opportunity to help you out. So I think it's really, really important to, to be proactive. With yeah. Moment. Okay. Mm. So, I mean, I guess we don't know how long this recovery is going to take place once the, once we're all out of isolation, once again, and you know, job keeper and job seeker might be a reality for people for some time yet. So reducing those household costs is going to be super important. So, Step one, getting an idea of where you're at financially. Mm -hmm. But where, where to from there do you think for people as they move forward? 
So once you've reviewed your fixed costs and sort of obviously got them as, as a, you know, got them down as, as efficiently as possible, we'll get them, you know, getting their, what you're paying in a, in a position. And then obviously then you've got what we talked about at the beginning, you've got the option to, to reduce them if you need to. Um, now, the other thing I talk to people about is actually, you know, really tracking, have, having, you know, shining the light on your, on your lifestyle spending. Now that's not saying it's, you know, right or wrong or good or bad, or you just need to go on, you know, scorched earth, which I mean, our, our lifestyle spending has significantly reduced now anyway, because we, we, we you know, we're, we're not doing a lot of stuff and we're not spending a lot of money on a lot of things at the moment. I mean, all I spend is groceries and a coffee every day. That's about yeah. it at the moment. I know. <laughs> That's, um, so, you know, going to the supermarkets the most is a whole lot of my day at the moment. Mine too, and I I just moved close to a fancy IGA, so I'm quite enjoying oh, nice going one. there nice ev one. every every single day and <laughs> looking at trying to work out why this pasta sauce is worth four times more than the I know. Around the corner. I know. Well, exactly, exactly. I've got yeah, I've got that around in my suburb as well. We've got the, a very very fancy IGA, and then the yeah. supermarket. It's like yeah, you go to the IGA for cheese if you want to if you want to have a, it's, you want it's to have true. a treat. It's surprising. <laughs> They have no fish. They have salmon and they have salted cod. I'm like, that is the oddest selection of fish you could possibly provide. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Must um, be a big Portuguese community or something. I don't know. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, yeah, just having a look at your, you know, I get people to list out their lifestyle spending for usually about 30 days because we're, you know, we all think we're very, you know, complicated and, and sophisticated with our spending, but we're actually creatures of habit with our spending. So it's to list out our lifestyle spending for about 30, at least 30 days. And that's just keeping a record of it. And like then basically what it does, it allows you to, you know, understanding where and what you're, where and what you're spending your money on, then, you know, having that information then gives you, you know, make allowance, uh, the ability to make educated and informed decisions about where you want your money to go. Because, you know, I was talking before about having our money pot. So, you know, it's important to understand what makes up our money pot, but also if you're wanting to go and do something different, like, you know, so basically try and reduce debt, have some cash reserves, you know, put away money for I don't know, holidays when we can go on holidays or whatever that might be, something needs to change in your money pot for you to be able to reallocate that money somewhere else. So once again, you know, reducing your fixed costs might free up cash flow to, you know, for whatever that might be, or might be just for having money for lifestyle at the moment. Mm -hmm. But then with your lifestyle spending, it's, there's a bit more flexibility because once your fixed costs are reviewed, they're, they're done. You know what I mean? Like unless you decide that you don't, you want to cancel them, which, you know, is, you need to have a chat to someone before you do that. But um, with our lifestyle spending, there's a bit more flexibility, whether we, you know, it's not an all or nothing approach. Once again, we might be able to sort of say, well, we're spending this much money in this area. Why don't we sort of ease back here? And then we can reallocate some money to, you know, say reducing debt or having some cash reserves. So it just allows us having that information or that data allows us to make an educated and informed decision around our, our spending. And it, it, when I, you know, when I've had clients do this, they develop what I call conscious spending habits. It's not making it right or wrong or good or bad, or, you know, it's just when people are spending money, they do it with more awareness and more consciousness about whether they are going to spend the money or not spend the money or choose to spend it elsewhere. So it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's not a one size fits all. It's just people... <laughs> It sounds like it kind of falls in very much about something we've been talking about a lot on Soundcheck, which is mindfulness as well, where it's like deliberate and it's thought through. And I know personally that I didn't even realize until like I, my wife and I did our own budget a couple of months ago. Uh, and like just the amount of money I was spending on coffees alone. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh my God. And so it's become something that I now am actually aware of and that, that yeah. kind of process of being actually actively conscious yep. of what you're doing becomes very yes. important. Yes. And that's, you know, I mean, like if you are um, tracking your, if you're looking at this and you're, you know, you're being, it's front and center and stuff like that, it's going to be, it's going to be front and center of your consciousness as well. So exactly what you're saying, Luke, about coffees, it's not saying don't stop drinking coffee or stop buying a coffee, but you might say, look, I'm just going to get one coffee a day instead just of don't have three, just don't have three <laughs> exactly. or four a day. Yeah, buy it's one not good and for your bank balance. Yeah, or, or, or your waistline. Or you, exactly. Or buy one and, and make the rest at home. Like, I mean, or whatever, like whatever that is. But it's just, you then have that information and that understanding to then make a decision about how much money you want to spend on coffee. Okay, so moving to a longer term view, you know, people will want to take advantage of having your financial coach in front of them right now. Mm. Like getting, getting past this time of kind of, you know, tightening the belt and everything. 
Uh, what are some things that you can suggest as a final coach, a financial coach that people should take on board generally around their financial health? You know, yeah. thinking long term about setting financial yeah. goals. I think, that, I think having that, you know, yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to, if I could share with you a, a strategy around the structure and the flow of funds with your bank accounts and stuff like that, because that's another area I look at, you know, um, review, or reviewing your debts is another really important thing at the moment, Luke, is to reviewing your debts, once again, right, listing them all out, listing out what your repayments are, finding out what the interest rate you're paying on those, on those debts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think at the moment, I'd rather, much rather be paying a 4% interest rate on a mortgage as opposed to a 20-something interest rate on a credit card. So, mm -hmm. you know, there might be some, once again, talk to your bank, talk to your mortgage broker about maybe looking at debt consolidation or um, balance transfers with your credit cards. There's lots of different things people can do to make sure that they're, what they're paying is as efficient as possible with regards to you know, the level of interest that they're paying and stuff like that. So once again, if you are contacting your providers and talking to them about your loan repayments, maybe doing a review of your debt situation as well would be a really, really important thing to, to look at to, to minimise how, you know, how much is going out or how much you need to, you know, your commitments are with regards to, to debt repayment. Um, the other thing is really having that, you know, that flow of um, money in your bank accounts and stuff like that. So whether it's, you know, I say to people, does your current structure help you or hinder you to manage your money? So that's another really important area. And what I suggest to people is, you know, particularly if once if they've um, reviewed their fixed costs, sorry, that's my, my washing machine in the background. I don't know if you can hear it. It's it's the, joy, the joys of being at home. Exactly. I should have put it on this morning, so I apologise for that. That's right. Yeah. I wouldn't um, have noticed if you hadn't pointed it out. Oh, good. Fantastic. I can hear it. But um, <laughs> it's, once they have reviewed their fixed costs, there's a fantastic resource. It's the ASIC Money Smart Budget Planner. Um, it's a government website and they, you know, they've got a huge amount of information and literature and anything you want to know about money and finances. It's, um, it's called the Money Smart um, website and in that website they've got a, um, a budget planner. So once you've reviewed your fixed costs, what you can do is you can go in and plug all your fixed costs in. They've got a drop down box and um, you can say whether it's you know, weekly, monthly, annually. Yep. And then at the top of the budget planner, you can nominate what your cycle is. So say, for example, you, what do you work on, Luke? Are you paid fortnightly or? Monthly. Monthly, right. Monthly. Okay. So, yeah, that's a bit tricky. Yeah. Even more so with monthly. I remember when yep. I was paid monthly, I used to be like, live like a queen for two weeks and live like yep. a... <laughs> Yes. So this is a strategy to absolutely... Steak in week one yep. and I'm down to vegetarian two by noodles, week Two minute noodles. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. I used to, I was once, yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough. So this is a really good strategy for people that are on monthly. So say you've got, so in this budget planner, you can nominate your cycle that you want to be on. So you'd nominate monthly at the top. You can plug all your fixed costs in and then, you know, nominate when you actually pay them. And what it does, this budget planner, it will annualise them up and it'll come back with a figure in saying, look, so basically to cover off all your fixed costs, you need to allocate X amount of dollars on a monthly basis to cover them for 12 months. So what I get people to do is have their everyday bank account, which is obviously where your incomes and your, you know, your lot, you know, you've got your FPOS card and stuff, and then set up a separate bills account. And then, and then you have that, whatever that monthly amount that you, that work, you worked out, you have an automatic transfer going in once a month when you, when you get paid, going to that account, that bills account. And then out of that bills account, you put in place all your direct debits and have all your you know, pay all your fixed costs, your direct debits and your B pays out of that account. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of that is that you, um, you know that at any time you've got money going into this account to pay for fixed costs, particularly for people in your industry that have got that, you know, they've got that up and down, that seasonal, very seasonal income. What this does, it smooths out your bill cycles as well. So, you know, I mean, you might be going okay and then you get, you know, not one, but two or three quarterly bills, which are usually pretty, pretty hefty. hefty. So basically... If you're not doing this, what you can do, you know, it'll blow you out of the water and you sort of play catch up, catch up, catch up. And then the next slot comes in. So what's here is that on a monthly basis, you're putting in money on a regular basis to cover off, to have money available for those fixed, those quarterly bills. So when they come, there is money sitting in this account to actually pay them. So it smooths out the ups and downs of bill cycles. And the other benefit is what's left in your everyday account is you know that you've got available for lifestyle and if you want to redirect that money to somewhere else. So it takes, you know, having to do that mental arithmetic every time you want to do something. Okay, what have I got coming in? What do I need to pay? When's that happening? Duh, 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 duh. 
completely takes that off the table. And the mm. other thing is human, the more human involvement you have in all this, the less chance it will happen. <laughs> and the more clear will be. So this is just <laughs> very, very seamless. So that's a great strategy. And then obviously you can have different accounts for savings or cash reserves or whatever, but it's just a really fantastic um, and efficient way to set your bank accounts up to, to, to allocate different things for different areas. That's uh, brilliant advice, Melissa. We might put that tool in the comments uh, yeah, when sure. we post up, post up this uh, webinar. But I think we have to leave it at that for today. Thank you so much, Melissa Ma from FinCare. We might have you back because you're an incredible guest. We might talk about superannuation, I reckon, next time and some other yeah, sure. know, stuff, that, stuff that people probably want to hear a little bit more about. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Soundcheck and thanks to everyone for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Luke. See you later, everyone. Right. Bye.